Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to the QT Bible Study with Steve Levitt. I am Steve Levitt, and it's pretty simple what we do. We have a live Bible study every morning, and uh, I get to facilitate. Good morning, Tina. Becky, good morning. Yolanda, winner, winner, chicken dinner. There we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for Yolanda this morning. Hey, Lance, good morning. Good morning, Debbie and Martha. Good to see you guys. Hi, Kenzie. All right. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. It's time to get up, Buttercup. Let's get in the word this morning. Got to shut my music off. Listening to a little Irish jig this morning. How fun is that? Celtic. Um, Celtic instrumental. That's my typical morning routine. With my coffee and my eggs and sausage. Good to see everybody. Hey, Kenzie and Lisa. Jennifer, Janice. Facebook user, good morning, exclamation mark. Don't know who you are. Clarissa, Kimberly, Cheryl, Jessica. Happy birthday, Lance. Lance's birthday today. Lance, is it your birthday today? It's my nephew, Zachary Sierra's 10th birthday today. Zachary's birthday today. Is that Cheryl? Who who wrote that? I can't see your name. You've been booted, I guess. I don't know your name. Happy birthday to Lance on Facebook. I must have missed that. Well, Lance, happy birthday, brother. It is. Thanks, Lance says. All right. Well, happy birthday. Hope you have a good one today. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 6. Did we end at the end of chapter five, by the way? Is it six, one? Is that where we're starting today? Somebody said, good morning. Can't see your name, but good morning, Jeremiah. Good morning to you. Lisa Bristow, good to see you this morning. Cheryl, you've been booted. Somebody else just before you, Cheryl, booted also. Uh, don't know who that is either. Well, guess what I get to do today? What's the word today? The word is Ecclesiastes chapter six, I believe. Somebody help me out where we ended yesterday. We didn't we didn't get into chapter six, right? Correct. Hi, Lola. Good morning. Can't see your name, but I know who you are. Uh, so I'm taking my uh, couple that I'm working with this week and weekend. Uh, we're going rock climbing in the Garden of the Gods this morning. We're going to go rock climb. Uh, one of those big rocks. If you've been to the Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs, those big, massive rocks, um, I'm taking them rock climbing. We're going to see how they do on the rocks this morning. It's going to be fun. So, uh, be praying for us. Yeah, not going to hide in the bushes for sure. All right, begin chapter 6, verse 1. That's what I'm hearing. Chapter 6, verse 1. Sunflower lady for, would like for us to be praying for her husband next Tuesday. He's going into surgery on his spine. We'll be praying for you. Hello, Reed. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all ready to get going? Sorry, I'm going to keep bugging y'all about this. If you want to come to the marriage retreat, I'll be teaching the 10 fundamentals of marriage in a, in a Christian marriage retreat in Colorado Springs, June 24th, 25th, and 26th, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday morning uh, at the Glenary Castle. Uh, you got a gum. It's going to be great. If you want to sign up, go to rockyourmarriage.com. Rockyourmarriage.com is where you can sign up for the retreat. Uh, Samantha Bug Bug has some fractured ribs. We'll be praying for you for sure. Hi, Bridget on YouTube. That's different, Bridget, that's on TikTok, I believe. 
Good to see you. All right, here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 1, Solomon talking about things that don't matter in this life, still talking about possessions, materialism, money, things like that. I have surrendered and given in. Hey, Robbie, good morning to the uh, New Living Translation. You guys have noticed I cannot read Old Testament clearly and easily in the New American Standard. The translation is too hard. It confuses my brain. I'm severe dyslexic, uh, not to mention some learning disabilities and things like that. Um, I just can't read it clearly or well, and it makes it harder for me to understand. So in texts like this, I'm giving up a little bit on the New American Standard and switching to the New Living Translation is what I'll be reading out of today. The New Living Translation. Somebody says, I'm back, but I can't see your name. Who are you? I'm back. Uh, who, tell me who you are. You'll have to go set your settings again right up here in the paragraph. Get out, come back in, click on the blue link that says facebook.com, streamyard.com slash Facebook, and click on the next button that gives me permission to see your name. That way I can see your name, whoever that is. But I'm glad you're back, whoever you are. Somebody tell me who that is that said I'm back. Um, all right. So New Living Translation. I bet God can still can still speak to us this morning. So here we go. Nobody's going to tell me who that is. I'm back. Born free. Good to see you, Samantha. Shannon, you here this morning? Hope you're here this morning, Shannon. Miss Emerald. Uh, uh, Lisa is born free. Good to see you, Lisa, this morning. Heather, glad you're here. Hi, Katie. Lisa says that Cheryl says I'm back. Cheryl still can't see your name. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Cheryl, I know it's a pain, but Cheryl, we love you and we, we're glad you're here. Ecclesiastes chapter six, verse one. There is another serious tragedy I have seen in the world, Solomon says. Solomon has tried it all, done it all. He's indulged his flesh. He's had everything he could ever want. He's had all the women, all the money, all the possessions, all the power, all the materialism, all the all, everything. He's he's indulged himself in everything the world can offer him instead of the way God told him to behave and, and be obedient to. He did what he wanted rather than what God wanted. He did what his flesh wanted rather than what he wanted. And he says, there's another serious tragedy that I've seen in the world probably through his own experience. God gives great wealth and honor to some people and gives them everything they could ever want, but then he doesn't give them the health to enjoy it. They die and others get it all. This is meaningless, a sickening tragedy. In other words, I've talked about this. You get all you want, you, you make all the money you want, you can have all the wealth you want, and then you die and it's a tragedy. Whenever you put your hope and, and, and obsession with things of this world, then you're going to die and it will be a tragedy. Don't do that. That's all it is. That's all it's saying. Hey, Sarah, good morning. Don't do that, right? Verse three, <clears throat> a, man, a man might have a hundred children and live to be very old, but if he finds no satisfaction in life, in the end, it does not get, in the end, he doesn't even get a decent burial. I say he would have been better not to have been born at all. I realize that his birth would have been meaningless and ended in darkness. He, he, in other words, you can have all the things that you think you want in this life, uh, but if, if you're not walking with God, if you're not being obedient to God, or if, you're, if you haven't got your priorities right, it's meaningless. It, it's worthless. It's dust, right? Solomon's pretty much driven that home over and over again. He wouldn't even have had a name and he would have never even seen the sun and known its existence. Yet he would have had more peace than he would have had more peace than he has in growing up to be an unhappy man. I think the point Solomon's saying here is don't live unhappily. 
Don't live a life that creates unhappiness. Don't function in a way. Don't be disobedient. Don't, don't chase after things that are only going to bring unhappiness. Live happy. And the way you live happy, quote, happy, joyful is the word I prefer. The way to live joyful is to live within the confines that God gave you. Uh, let me give you an illustration. I've, I've said this before a while back. Whenever Dane was two years old, two and a half, maybe three, we had a little creek that ran behind our house. And I took him down. We went fishing and he caught his first fish ever. I let him reel it in. It was a little sunfish, a little perch, about that long. Beautiful little fish. And this creek behind our house, you know, it had bass in it and snakes and turtles. Uh, it was it was not a beautifully clean, you know, it was in the middle of the town and there was it was messy and it was cold and it would freeze over completely in the winter. Uh, it was a pretty harsh environment for a fish to live in, a little perch. That little perch was food for almost everything, the coons, uh, it, almost everything. <clears throat> and it was cold and it would freeze over and polluted water. And, you know, it was a pretty harsh environment for that little guy. And so we caught that little guy. And as a memory, I thought it would be cool to take Dane's first fish and put it in this 75 gallon fish tank I had, this huge fish tank. We'll put him in there and we'll watch him grow for the next 18 years. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this fish. We'll put the, we'll take this fish out of this harsh environment. We'll put him in a controlled temperature environment. We'll feed him every day. We will admire and adore this fish. We'll take this fish and, and, and it will have a life of luxury. It will be joyful and peaceful the rest of its life out of that harsh environment where, where its master now will adore it, take care of it, feed it, uh, keep it safe in these four walls of, of, of glass. It will be safe. It will have the perfect, wonderful, incredible life. Dane was so excited. He was, woohoo. And we watched the fish swim around, put it in there, watched it all evening, and it was fun and everything else. But that fish didn't really look content in this tank. This fish looked like it was constantly looking for a way out of the, of the confines, the boundaries that we had put it in. And I'm just thinking, look, fish, just stay in the boundaries. Just stay in the tank. Be content. Settle down. Go, go, go find a little uh, uh, lazy boy chair in there somewhere and just rest. You're safe now. And I couldn't, couldn't really understand why that fish just would not be content in that tank. We went to bed that night. I got up the next morning early as I do, and I'm, I'm looking around the tank, looking around the tank over here under there, turned over rock. The fish was gone. The fish was not in the tank anymore. Back in the back where the uh, uh, thermostat goes in, the, the heater goes in to keep the water warm. There was a little gap about this big uh, where it went in there is the only uh, exit point, the only access point in the whole tank. And sure enough, I look over the back of the tank and old Wilbur is dead. Crispy, crispy critter. He was dead on the carpet below the tank. He had jumped out of the tank. He had found that one little hole and had and had jumped out of the tank in the middle of the night. And he was dead the next morning. You get the illustration. You, Trey, tree, tree, tree scum, you, tree scum, are a child of God. And God says, I made you, I created you, and you and I. And he says, here's my fish tank. Here's a Bible. Here's, here's what I want from you. Here's what I, just stay within the confines of my boundaries, my rules. If you'll stay in here, I'll adore you. You'll be safe. I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll nourish you. 
I'll do everything uh, you need. I'll give you everything you need. Or you can choose the harsh reality of life outside of my will, outside of where I, I want you to stay. And Solomon says, better for this man to not even have been born than to live an unhappy life. Oh, Tresum over here, Trixium over here on TikTok is telling me how terrible I was to take a fish out of its environment. That fish wasn't joyful in its environment. A fish lives a life full of uh, constant adrenaline and fear and worry. A little perch lives its life knowing that it's food. It's food for the next bigger fish. And so it lives a constant life of fear, worry, and stress. It lives a constant life, this, this little fish, of on alert, guarded, fearful, constantly. That's how I think we should live when we're outside of God's will. We're on our own. Our safety is our own. But whenever we live the way God wants us to live, and this is the whole point that Solomon is making here. This is the whole point that Solomon is making. His point is just live the way God wants you to live. Just live the way God wants you to live. Just live the way I, I, I've asked you to live. I will take care of you. I will protect you. My will will be done in your life. And this is the point Solomon's making. Verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. All people spend their lives scratching for food, but they never seem to have enough. Right? You never have enough in life. Not just food, but everything. We never have enough. Considering this, do wise people really have an advantage over fools? So do you think you're wise? You think you're smart? You think you got it all figured out? Do poor people gain anything by being wise and knowing how to act in front of others? Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Enjoy what you have, Solomon says, rather than, than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless, and it is like chasing the wind. It is vanity. Enjoy what you have instead of living a life desiring what you don't have. Hey, Joe, good to see you on TikTok. Glad you're here. Underline that verse seven, uh, at nine. Verse nine. Underline that. Circle it. Hold on to that verse. That that you could you could post this Bible verse all over your house. Car. Enjoy what you have. Be content with what God has allowed you to have. Be content with where God has you, rather than rather than desiring, living a life, being discontent, never having enough. I wished I had more money. I wished I was thinner. I wished I was heavier. I wished I had bigger body parts. I wished I had more food. I wished I had more friends. I wished I had a better church. I wished, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. That's, that's living a life desiring. Think about this. Look, don't just listen to me this morning. Don't just go, okay, that was a nice Bible study, Steve. I want you to really process. Everybody make a list of 10 things that your brain often wants more of. I, that takes me about two seconds, right? What is it? <laughs> hey, Treeks and some, we love you, brother. We love you. We're on here talking about Jesus. I know we got off on fish. Hey, man, we love you. I'm glad you're here, right? I'm glad you're here. I hope that I hope that 
um, <clears throat> you can find some hope. Uh, and nobody pick on old treat treats some there. Uh, man, I'm glad you're here. And I hope you learned something about Jesus, about God. Maybe you can teach us something. I'm open. I'm open to hear if you've got something for me. I'm, I'm open to hear that um, for sure. What do you desire that you really need to learn to just be content with what God has given you? Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Joy, enjoying what you have. Misery in life, wishing for more. Desiring what you don't have. You pick. Which one are you going to pick? Are you going to pick joy or are you going to pick discontented misery? You pick. That's what Solomon's saying. Come on. Quit living that life of, of victim mentality that I don't have or this happened or that happened or, uh, you know, how terrible my life is. Choose joy. Just choose joy. Choose to be content with what God has allowed in your life and what God has given you in life. Choose to be content. Verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 9. Ecclesiastes, hey, Mother Tucker. <laughs> Good to see you, Mother Tucker. <laughs> TikTok cracks me up. <coughs> Ecclesiastes 6, 9. All right. Verse 10. I'm going to look at something here. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 10. Everything has already been decided, by the way. Everything's already been decided. I don't think I have a lot of control over my future. I don't think I have a lot of control over the number of days I live on this earth. Psalm 139 says that God numbered my days before even one of them came about. I know that God has changed his mind according to prayer. Moses, uh, you know, some, but ultimately I think God is in control and, and he's sovereign and he's right. And I have to surrender and give up control and trying to manage and fix my life and just, man, just go rock climbing, right? Just rest, sit back in your chair and chill. God's got it. Just swim around in, in the tank that God has put you in. Some of us have smaller tanks. Some of us have bigger tanks. Uh, I don't know what that is. Hold on. Who is that? Somebody's. There we go. Some of us have really luxurious fish tanks. Some of us have really clean fish tanks. Some of us have a little messier fish tanks. Swim in the tank God gave you. Swim in the, enjoy the tank God gave you. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Apple ID came up. Somebody's using my Apple ID in Dallas, Texas. It's probably one of my kids. And, 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 and then it gave me a code and it was giving me all kinds of stuff. So we're good. Everybody's good. Everything has already been decided. Verse 10. It was known long ago what each person would be. So there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. <laughs> Look at what he says. Look at what Solomon says. Everything has been decided, so there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. That's pretty bold of New Living Translation to translate that that way. That's a pretty bold. Let me read. I'm going to read that in the New American Standard right quick. That's really interesting, verse 10. I, I didn't read that before. Uh, 
I'm going to read verse 10 out of the New American Standard. New American Standard. 610. Whatever exists has already been un, has already been named, and it is known what man is, for he cannot dispute with him who is stronger than he is, God. So you cannot dispute, quit arguing with God, quit having a dispute with God about what tank he's put you in. Stop arguing with God about what tank God put you in. The size of your house, the car you drive, the income, the 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 the, the job, the 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 family that you have. Uh, stop arguing with God. That's put so well. That's how I've tried to say it so often that I can't get it said right. That's what I'm trying to say so often. This is the I didn't even know this verse was in there. This is the first time I'm really reading it uh, or catching it because I, the New Living really gave it clarity. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be. So there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. Mind blown right now. Mind blown. This is what I've tried to say so often. That God is sovereign. God is in control. Grow where you're planted. God decides. And you can fight that your whole life and be miserable. You can, you can, you can uh, uh, argue with God about it. Uh, whenever my wife died of cancer, whenever Martha, my wife, died of cancer at age 30, left me with a two-year-old son, Dane, and a four-month-old baby, Madison, I could have argued with God. I could have fought him on it. I could have said, I, I, I'm I, not going to accept what you've decided for my life, for Martha's life. I could have fought, her, fought him on it. Did you know I never fought God on that? I really didn't. I didn't fight God. I didn't get mad at God. I didn't question God. I didn't like it. I didn't want it, but I didn't fight him on it. I understood he's in control and he numbers our days and he decided her days were up. And he's God. Who am I to argue with God? Isn't that so good? Solomon said what I've been trying to say about Martha's death and the rest of my life for so long. I'm going to read it one more time. Keep going. We're almost done. Everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be. So there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. The more words you speak, the less they mean. So why overdo it? Blah, 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 blah. I want this. I want that. I don't like that. God, you're doing it wrong. God, da, 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 da. the more words you speak, the less they mean. Anybody need one on their wall? The more words you speak, the less they mean. Sting for Steve. Ouch. That's an ouchie for me. I talk too much. Verse 12. In the few days of our empty lives, this little life, this little BB on a football field, this little speck of dust on a hundred mile road, uh, we call our life the life here on earth, the few days, in the few days of our empty lives, who knows how our days can be uh, best be spent. And who can tell what will happen in the future after we are gone? Stop trying to control everything. Stop trying to control everything. Stop trying to control everything. This life here on earth is tiny compared to eternity. Let's be focused on and concerned about what God is doing in my eternity, where I'm going to be eternally, how I'm going to live life for the next eternal years. This life here on earth is short and futile. Things of this earth, things that we take so heavy, my wife dying. Stop fighting your destiny. 
Stop fighting the things that God is allowing in your life. The family, the money, the whatever God has, uh, has given you. Each one has a different one. We all have a different fish tank. We all have a different fish tank. Hey, is tree still around? Tree, you still here, brother? <laughs> Everybody jumped on tree pretty hard. I did too. I hope you're still here, tree. What do you guys think about that? I'm going to read your comments now. What do you think about that? That we just did some heavy duty lifting. We just did some deep diving into who God is and what life is really all about. That that may be the most intense part of Ecclesiastes we've read so far. I'm going to go reread it again. We may study it again tomorrow. Man, I'm blown right now. This, this is something I've tried to describe and explain to people for 30 years and don't know how. Solomon just put it. Good stuff, huh, Jennifer? God knows everything. Relax and enjoy the ride. My fish tank needs cleaning, Don says. Don, don't work too hard at it. Just, just surrender to God. In fact, why don't you let God clean the fish tank, right? You may need to make some better choices and, and, and do some things right. But really hand it to God. Let God clean your fish tank. Yeah, mine gets dirty every day too, Martha. And God, you know how God cleans my fish tank? Through the blood of Jesus. God uses blood to clean a fish tank. God uses blood and flesh to clean a fish tank. He sent his son to die on the cross. And whenever I surrender to that, my, my tank is clean. I get, I get to stand before God pure and holy and perfect and clean every day because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Not because I got a lot of scrub brushes. Not because I'm good at cleaning fish tanks. I'm not. I've tried. I'm not a good fish tank cleaner. The blood of Jesus Christ cleans my fish tank every day. Amen. That's right, Don. Hang in there, brother. Come back every morning. We do this every morning, 7 o'clock Mountain Standard, 8 o'clock Central. Every morning we do this Bible study. And we're going to keep looking at Solomon's wisdom, right? Got to trust and know. That's right, Melanie. Hey, Jay Nunn. Amen. Glad you're here, Jay. Cheryl! Cheryl's in the house. She's joined the party. I can see your name, Cheryl. Happy birthday, Zachary. All right, Sarah's son, Zachary. Happy birthday to him. Lance, happy birthday to you. I need some wisdom. Jesse, you got a whole book of it right here. Start reading your Bible. Start reading your Bible. Start absorbing what God has for you. Start learning what God has for you. Here's the, all the wisdom you need. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this. Jesse, all scripture, all of scripture, the Bible is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. That's all you need right there. Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Joshua 1 8. So good. Don, I'm glad you're here. Come back and hang out with us. Patrice, this was what I needed, she says. <clears throat> I love it when God shows up. Enjoy whenever I can enjoy, join. Yeah, yes, sir. Amen. I just get confused about my direction. Look, Jesse, who knows what direction God's going to take you today? Don't worry about it. Don't control it. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to, don't try to be in control of your direction. Just show up and be faithful every day. Just wake up, show up, bend a knee to God and be faithful every day. Let him figure out your direction. Let him be in control. Anybody else? Yeah, Cheryl, man, we all need to hear it every day. Uh, uh, 9 a.m. Bible study is rough, LOL. I don't know who you are. I'm glad you're here, but I can't see your name. Yay, it worked, whoever that is. 
can't see your name. You got to click on the link up here to change your settings. It's streamyard.com slash Facebook. And then click it again for so I can see your name. Thank you, Steve. I need to hear this today. Very wise words as always. Blessing always. Yep, you bet, Debbie. Not sure if you saw the name Cheryl Schultz or if it was mine. Oh, you're right. That was Cheryl Clark. Cheryl Schultz, sorry. It was you, Cheryl Clark. I, wrong, Cheryl. Cheryl, come on. Keep working on it, Schultz. Get it right, Schultzy. Kim. Kimmy. Hey, Kimmy, you need to change your settings again. I can't see your name uh, up here. Uh, join us every morning, 8 o'clock Central. Yep. Thank you, Debbie, letting everybody know. If you want a free Bible, click on the link in the bio or go to hopeshinesministry.com, hopeshinesministry.com. Fill out the form. We'll send you a free Bible. How fun is that? Press what? All right, Kimmy, in that paragraph above my head on Facebook where it tells you all the intro stuff, there's a blue link that says streamyard.com slash Facebook. Click on that. And then the next page that comes up, I think somewhere on there, it says click here to give Steve access or the host access to see your name. Click on that and then you're good to go. Some people say you have to get out of the Facebook and then come back in to do it. I'm not sure. Thanks for the message. You bet, Don. Join us every morning. Love your study. Thanks, JD. Man, I'm, I love that you're here. Come back and join us every day. Yes, Kimmy. <laughs> Woohoo! Screw light bulbs. You did it, Kimmy. Good job. Robbie, have a good day, brother. <clears throat> I'm going rock climbing today at the uh, Garden of the Gods, taking my couple that I'm counseling. Uh, rock climbing. We're going to do a little therapy on the rocks today. It's pretty amazing what comes out whenever you're 60 foot in the air and uh, the real the real trust issues come out for sure. Uh, so sorry, I've been slipping away, everyone. There, Big Joe, I need your wonderful people and the Lord in my life. Yep, Big Joe, come hang out. Good stuff today, Martha says. All right, let me close this in prayer. Woohoo! Look at that. That's a hair don't. That's not a hair do. That's a hair don't. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us. Father, thank you for today. What a what an eye-opening experience your word has been to me today. Uh, Lord, how relevant is this passage where Solomon tells us through you, uh, you giving him wisdom says, Lord, stop fighting with you. I know you get tired of us fighting with you. You must. Maybe you don't. You're God of us fighting you whenever you're looking at us saying, don't cross the street. I know you. I know that toy looks fun on the other side of the street, but a car will run over you, will kill you. Don't jump out of the tank. It's not safe. You will die. Lord, help us to just stay within your will and accept your destiny, accept your will for our lives, accept what you've given us, the lot you've given us, the tank you've given us. Lord, help us to rest and who you've made us to be, and be thankful, and celebrate this person you've made in me, this beauty that you've created me to be, this child of yours. Help us to celebrate that. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for his blood that cleans our tank every day. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo -hoo! Good. One of the, my favorite studies in the last year today. How good is that? Yes, Kimmy, you're fixed now. Easier to be joyful about my fish tank, but hard to be joyful in my poor swimming techniques. <laughs> Kimberly, it is our poor swimming techniques that keep us needing God, right? It is my brokenness and my sin nature and my flesh that keeps reminding me, the thorn in my side that keeps reminding me that I need God. If I was a great swimmer, I wouldn't need God. If I could clean my own tank, I wouldn't need God. I know, I know, sissy, amen. That's the beauty of God, is that he made us, allowed us to be broken, right? To keep us in need of him. Solomon 
had everything he could want, wisest man in the world, and God humbled him and said, no, you need me. You cannot do it on your own. You need me. Good word, Kimberly. Yes. Have a good day, Melanie. Thank you, Steve. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Steve. You bet, Sarah. Amen. Sure needed to rest in these woods today. Yeah, go rest in the woods. Amen. Anybody else? Is self-pleasure sin? Talking about masturbation, Alex? Are you asking, is masturbation sin? Uh, self-pleasure, I'm assuming that's what you mean. Uh, it depends. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions about that. Uh, if you're lusting, then it's sin. Yes. If it's lustful, then it's sin. Yes. I do think that there are um, special occasions. My personal conviction, anyway, everybody has their own conviction about this. Uh, my personal conviction is that if my spouse and I both agree and we're away from each other and uh, uh, I'm thinking about her or she's thinking about me, then I'm not convicted about that. I believe me and God are fine on that. But if you're single or you're thinking about someone other than your spouse and and pretty much everybody thinks about lustful things. Um, then I believe it's outside of the will of God. So there's the answer to that. Have a great day. How about that? Let's just jump over to something really heavy there. Uh, masturbation. Yeah. I uh, hope that answers your question, Alex. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? Anybody else? Jessica, I hope you have a great day. All right, Sissy, have a good day. So anybody else? Questions, comments? Anybody want to anybody want to top that last question? Come on. Come on. Questions are welcome here. Tree, you still around? Did Tree ever come in again? Or did he take off? Or did he get booted? I don't know. I, I think it got heated on TikTok for a little bit. He may have gotten booted. Have a great day. Thanks, Steve, for another wonderful Bible study. You bet, Lisa. You have a great day too, Lisa. The tree fell. <laughs> Lisa says hello to Marty. Good. I'll let her know. She's in Texas closing down her schools, the work that she does. She had to go to Texas. So I'm I'm batching it alone for a couple of weeks until my son's wedding at the end of next week. I'll be headed next week uh, to, to Texas to um, uh, for my son's wedding. I, I'm performing his wedding. So. I love your accent. I don't have an accent. Come on, Alex. I know I'm a redneck, Southern Texas redneck, but I'm glad you like it. Where are you from, Alex? Tell us where you're from. We'd like to know a little bit more. We're here every morning, by the way. We do this live every morning, uh, 7 o'clock Mountain, 8 o'clock Central. Come back and join us. Where are you from, Alex? We'd love to know more about you. Uh, we sure cover a wide <laughs> topics this year <laughs> janice you bet we do that's really funny janice uh, i love that timber the tree fell <laughs> ireland ireland check this out let me hit play on my you're gonna like this alex i am playing on pandora irish Oh, come on. Totally messed that up. Sorry. I was going to impress you, but I, I listen to Irish Celtic music constantly. It's my thing. Uh, I am Irish in descent myself, Alex. And um, I love all things Ireland. Scotland, Ireland, uh, Celtic. I love all things Celtic for sure. Instrumental Irish and Celtic radio on Pandora. Hold on, I'll give you a little shot here. Joshua Bell. No snow on the ground. It got 55 degrees yesterday and all the snow melted. We are Scotch Irish, me too. Uh, mine says Scotch Irish. Love all things Scotch Irish. It's, it's on my it's on my dream list. Top ten wish list is to get to go over to Scotland, Ireland, spend some time. 
maybe even hit Switzerland along the way. Anything else? Any other questions? I don't have to be there till 10 this morning, so I've got a little more time. I'm not in any big hurry. Uh, I have not visited Alex. I so want to. Uh, re I've been to London on the way to Africa, Kenya, Africa. We do mission work in Kenya, Kenya, Africa. Been to London. Uh, that's my European extent. Uh, but I really, really want to to take ten week, ten days or two weeks sometimes, and, and do Ireland and um, Scotland and Switzerland, and maybe a few things up there someday. If it's God's destiny, if not, I'm going to be content. How about that? Is Alex a, a, an Irish name? I didn't know Alex was an Irish name. Uh, my brother's name is Shannon, by the way. And I'm telling you, I was born Irish. I, I just love everything Irish. I, I, the food. The music, uh, the scenery, uh, yeah. All right, I guess we're done. You guys have a great day. Keep on keeping on. We'll see you back here again tomorrow morning for live quiet time Bible study with Steve Levitt. Sign up for the Bible study uh, for the uh, marriage retreat in Colorado Springs at rockyourmarriage.com. Rockyourmarriage.com is where you can sign up for the marriage retreat. June 24th, 25th, 26th. Um, pretty cool. All right. Keep on keeping on. We'll see you guys. All right, Joe, you have a good day too. We'll see you tomorrow. You're not into, I don't know what haggis is. <laughs> Sorry. What is haggis, sissy? Is that a, that's the character on Harry Potter, isn't it? Haggis. Debbie don't play. <laughs> Debbie don't. Debbie is my guardian angel man. She she guards with a fierce protection. Uh, you guys, I really appreciate you guys. Somebody tell me what haggis is right quick. Facebook, I'm going to let y'all go. Keep on keeping on. See ya. <laughs>